The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> on King, on you husky! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The Buckeye Bank was silent and dark, a contrast to the lighted buildings that lined the single street of the settlement. Boisterous miners and trappers pouring into the cafes and dance halls never noticed the two figures slip from the shadows at the back of the bank. Easy now, pal. There's no time for a slip-up. Just keep going. That does it. Mush, you malamute, smush! Talk about a pushover. <laughs> Never walked in anything so easy in all my life. Thanks to you, Dugan. I told you we'd have to work this job from the inside, didn't I? <laughs> the old man's going to be mighty surprised in the morning when he finds his cashier gone and his safe empty. Yes, sir. Uh, him and them miners. <laughs> I always did say a man was a fool to put his dust in the bank. Just invite somebody to walk in and help themselves like we did. How much you figure we got? Yeah, there's more than $50,000 worth of gold right here. Added to what I took from the till yesterday. Yeah, I'd say it was a nice profit. Ah, I can see it already. The boat for the States and me on board. <laughs> uh, follow the river out to the cabin. We can bunk there tonight. Yeah. We'll cross the river in the morning, and from there on, it's a clear trail to Skagway. <laughs> Stuttering Walt Kramer was a short, stout man, rendered almost speechless in moments of excitement. Standing in front of the empty safe in Buckeye's bank, he was surrounded by a crowd of curious miners, all of them demanding he take steps to recover the stolen gold. When Sergeant Preston stood in the doorway, he realized immediately what had happened. No, 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 boys, please. It's all your fault, Walt. You never should have left that thieving cashier out of your sight. But I, I, I... I, I, I tell you, I, I, I didn't. Ain't fit to be a banker. Can't even talk straight. Oh, wait a minute, man. Preston. Hey, Sergeant, the bank's been robbed. It was the cashier that done it. Oh, thank heaven you're here, Sergeant. What was I, that I heard them saying about the cashier, they, Walt? They're right. It, it was Dugan, Dugan Laval. He's the cashier? He, he was the cashier, yes. Walt, I want you to tell me what happened. Now, take your time. You men keep quiet for a few minutes. There, there ain't much, much to tell. I unlocked the doors about, about 15 minutes ago and found the safe doors open like that. The window over there was, was open, too. Hmm. And there were two of them. This is the way they got out. Yes, that's what I thought. I'm, I'm all right now, Sergeant. It's just when I'm excited I start stuttering. Laval's gone, too, huh? Sure he is. Went over to his rooms myself. I think he could have left this window unlocked when he left last night. He must have climbed in. The door was locked, like I said. Think there's any chance of catching him, Sergeant? Well, Clem, there's only one answer to that. King and I'll try to pick up his trail. There ain't been any fresh snow. His tracks ought to be pretty plain. Come on, King. Looks like our work's all cut out for us. You think you'll need any help? The King's all the help I'll need, Walt. First, I want a closer look at those tracks. You ain't going after them fellas alone, are you? I know that, Lavelle, from seeing him around town. I can tell you right now, Sergeant, he ain't the kind to give up without a fight. Well, every crook's ready to fight until he's cornered, Clem. All right, King, you ready, boy? <coughs> all right, then get the dogs up. <coughs> These tracks lead to the north, Walt. That means Lavelle plans to cross the river and then go on to Skagway. So every minute we lose here, we'll give him a better chance to make good his getaway. Good luck to you. I, I sure hope you catch up with him. Goodbye. Seems to me like we've seen the last of that dust, Clem. You don't know much about Preston, do you? I don't expect the impossible, if that's what you mean. Any man that'd be smart enough to take a job in a bank, work at it for six months, biding the time, planning a robbery like this one. 
Yeah, he ain't going to be easily stopped. Yeah? Well, there goes the only man in the Yukon that could stop him. And I'm betting you a five-ounce poke of dust right now that he puts Laval in handcuffs. It ain't for me to say, Clem, but if I was in your shoes, I'd put my money on a surer thing. It's two of them against Preston. You're wrong there. It's two of them against Preston and that dog of his. When it comes to a showdown, King's as good as any man. At a cabin on the river's edge, Cliff Cheney and Dugan Laval finished breakfast. Dugan watched his partner's preparations for the trip across the river through narrowed eyes. In guarded moments, his face was open and apparently honest. It was only the cold cruelty of those steady eyes that could give him away. This was a man possessed of the cunning of a fox and the deadly viciousness of a rattler coiled to strike. Dugan, you don't know what it'll mean to me seeing the last of this country. I've hated it ever since I laid eyes on it. Yeah? Cold, lonely. Only the pine trees and the wolves to keep you company on the trail. <laughs> Say, you want to be careful how we load this gold on the boat. You're not going to make that boat. Oh, now, look. Well, the horses couldn't keep me. Dugan, put that gun down. I'll put it down when I'm finished with it. You didn't think I intended to split that money with you, did you? You... You're going to... Yes, I'm going to kill you. No, 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 you can't. We worked this together. Together? I worked this robbery the same way I worked all of them. Who did the planning? Who laid the groundwork? Not you, Cliff. All you ever did was to be there with the sled at the right time. You dirty double-crossing skunk. You knew all the time what you were going to do. You've been planning to kill me all this time, and I never suspected it. Yes, that's exactly right. All right. You win. I won't stand in your way, Dugan. Go on, catch that boat. <laughs> no. That boat doesn't leave until this afternoon, Cliff. It won't work. When I leave this cabin, I'm not leaving a man who'll tell any tales. I won't try to stop you. Go ahead. You'll have the boat, and I won't be able it's to... It's no use. You're wasting time. No. No, no. No, don't do it. It's murder. It's murder. You can't... <laughs> Makes you think I'd stop short of murder. The sound of the shot carried far over the Yukon stillness. Sergeant Preston heard it, and King heard it as he urged the dogs to greater speed. On King! On you huskies! <laughs> Faster than any dog in the Yukon, King raced ahead of the pack, sensing the urgency in the Mountie's cry. There's a cabin ahead. Shot must have come from there. <laughs> oh, King. Ho, oh, you huskies. Ho, oh, boy. Come on, fella. We're going in there. All right, Cynthia. I see who that... Who is it? King. My medicine kit on the sled. Oh, Mountie. If I thought I'd live to be glad to see a Mountie. I don't try to talk. I gotta talk. Ain't that much time. I'll have my medicine kit in a minute. Medicine kit? <laughs> it's no use. I gotta tell you. I'll save your strength. No. Listen to me. I'm... Cliff Cheney. I work with Dugan Laval. Laval? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I robbed the bank in Buckeye last night. I know. I've been following your trail. Well, that's it, fella. Over here. He's getting away in a boat. We was gonna split the gold. Oh, oh. Sorry. I'll try not to hurt you. He shot me so I could get away. Better get it. No use getting that kid open, Monty. Leave me and save yourself. If he comes back, he'll kill you too. Oh, 
cliff. He's gone, King. <coughs> Very touching scene. Is it the duty of Mounties to play nursemaid to escaping bank robbers? Lavelle. Yes, I'm Lavelle. And you, I believe, are the famous Sergeant Preston I've heard so much about. Your gun, Sergeant. So the killer always returns to the scene of his crime. Not exactly. I drew back into the trees as I saw you ride up here. <laughs> you better quiet that dog before I silence him with a bullet. Quiet, King. I'm glad you arrived. You're just in time to finish loading my boat for me. Finish loading your boat? Outside. And remember one false move and it'll be your last one. Tying you up was an extra precaution, Sergeant. Now that I've destroyed your sled and taken your gun, I won't have to worry about being stopped before the boat leaves the dock. Goodbye. <laughs> the story you tell of the escape of Duke and Laval should be very interesting. King. <laughs> King, old fella. Start to work on these ropes. <laughs> That's it, boy. I knew you wanted a chance, Adam, but I didn't want to risk having him put a bullet through your heart. He's a cold-blooded killer. The pride of all cowards. But we'll stop him, King. We'll stop him in a way that'll surprise him. There. Now my hands are free. Those teeth of yours scissor that rope in record time. Now to get this rope off my feet. I... There. That long rope over there in the corner, King, bring it to me. King, I'm going to fasten this rope to your collar. It isn't time to put a raft together. So with this tied around my waist and the other end of your collar, we'll have to swim the river. Luckily, it's fairly narrow. Preston's fingers worked quickly, securing the knots in the rope attached to the dog's collar, while King stood by obediently, waiting for his master's commands. With the slack of the rope coiled about his arm, the Mountie walked with the dog to the river's edge. Together, they plunged into the icy waters. All right, King. <coughs> Swim port. When you get to the other side, wrap this rope around a tree. Oh, if you can only make it, I can swim and partially pull myself to shore. That's it, King. Keep going, fella. The dog pulled against the current, which at times seemed powerful enough to pull him downstream. The Mountie watched, his eyes on King. Could he make it? Could he make it? Good boy, King. He's almost ashore. He made it. Oh, good old King. It was later that afternoon. Passengers were loading into the boat at Skagway. Dugan Laval stood on the dock as he prepared to fall into line, a smile of deep satisfaction creasing his face. Waiting to get on the boat, too, partner? Yes. Going back to the States, eh? That's right. And you? Heading in the same direction, and maybe I wouldn't be glad to get there. This country's all right for them that likes it, but not for me. You look pretty pleased about leaving it. Yes. Yes, I'm very pleased to be leaving the Yukon. The only thing that holds this place together is the Mounties. Boy, what a rat's nest this would be without them. All this gold and men cutting each other's throats to get it. It all depends on how you look at it. And you'll be looking at it from behind bars, Lavelle. But, Preston! Yes, we meet again. Only this time I'm holding the gun. How did you... Hey, what's going on here? Very simple. I swam the river. Made my way to a trading post where a trapper was kind enough to give me these clothes and this gun. Between us, King and I always get our man. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon, Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious.